What I want to show today is why farmers that grow crops uh, spray their fields for insects and for weeds and then why they also spread fertilizer on them as they're growing. Before I get into this, I will tell you why we have a section of our land that did not get sprayed at all or did not get any fertilizer this year. And that's because for the last 15 or 20 years, this corner of this field right here um, doesn't belong to us. It kind of cuts into the neighbor landlord and they didn't care that we harvested it and planted corn on it because it wasn't useful to them. But last year, a new owner came in and they told us this spring after we planted that they want to have that land back which is fine with us. We just, they, they didn't tell us before we planted the corn. And the only thing they wanted us to do is not spray or fertilizer. That's fine with us. And they agreed that we can at least take whatever corn grows off of it. So that's why we have a section of our land right here, this little area that did not get sprayed or fertilized. So right here, pretty much what the spraying does is it kills all the weeds that would grow right here between the corn rows. Because this right here got opened up a couple days ago and that's why i'm able to walk in here and show you this they you got all these weeds right here that were growing and this right here where all this corn's really short and then over here on the ground right here where the sprayer went there's absolutely zero weeds it's nice dirt this is exactly what you want and you want it just like this because you want the corn to have zero competition when growing you want only corn growing that's way it has the optimal ability to grow and it doesn't have to fight other plants. But what happened right here is the reason this corn's so short is first off, it had to fight this grass. And this grass was coming up just as fast as the corn was right here. So there was always shade going down to the roots and it wasn't getting all the rain and all the nutrients needed and the, all the sunlight because it, the grass was taking some of it and any other weeds that was growing. So right here, this corn right here, that's really short is only about five, six feet tall in this area. And then right here, where the sprayer went to kill all the weeds, and it also got the fertilizer. This corn behind me, that's around 10, 11 feet tall. It had pretty much the best growing ability we could give it. It had zero weeds it was fighting. It got all the fertilizer that we could put down because it was going straight to the corn. No weeds were taking any of it. And then, as you can see right here, as we get farther and farther away from the spray and the fertilizer, because it does mist over a little bit, uh, you can see right right here is exactly where it pretty much ended. That's the shortest point when the fertilizer completely didn't hit it anymore. And you can see as it's coming down, it's getting less and less nutrients. As this corn right here got less nutrients, it means it's growing less because it has not as much to work with. So it's not going to be as tall. It's half the height. This is around f five to six feet tall in this area while that's the 10, 11 feet. So the stalk is about half the size what we're looking at over there and then a random ear right here if i can find one a lot of these don't even have them um like birds are eating them off because they're they're all opened up they're not closed you can see they're getting eaten they're rotting right here i'm gonna find one ah. let's grab something they're all these little dinky chode things right here They're getting eaten off by animals because they're not getting fully closed up. They're rotting. So the ears that are here aren't even good. And then we'll walk over here and compare it to uh, what we're wanting to get. We'll just grab a random one from right here. Looks like a nice ear. It's literally about five feet from where the sprayer stops. So it doesn't take much. And we're looking at, it's about a quarter of the length. No animals were biting this off. It was fully closed up. No raw on the nice ear. That's what you want. So what, um, so what the spraying and the fertilizing allowing us, is allowing us to do is it's able to maximize our yield and our tonnage off of the amount of land that we have, which is very valuable because land is extremely hard to come by nowadays. 
you can't always get it. And then not only are you trying to maximize your yield and tonnage off your land because it's hard to come by, but you also have to add in the factors of mother nature. So you can get a lot of wind damage. So these stalks right here, because they're so thick, they're a lot stronger. So they'll be a lot harder to blow over. These little tiny things right here, it won't take much wind to blow them over. But we're very fortunate up here in Vermont that in our area, we don't get too much wind damage. So we're pretty lucky. But what we do get a lot, and what I can show you right here in a second when I turn the camera is we get a lot of animal damage. Uh, bear damage is very common. So that's right where the damage is from not being able to get sprayed or fertilized. And about 40 feet over, we have all this crop damage from bears. So bears will come in, they'll eat a bunch of corn, and then they'll fill up because they're trying to get ready for hibernation. They'll fill their stomachs full, they'll puke it back up after rolling around a bunch, and they just start flattening land. We have the same thing over here. In this field, I think we have two acres flattened. And I saw in one field where I flew the drone, it's a six acre field, there's a whole acre gone in a little six acre field. So if we have one acre gone in a little six acre field in 20 or 50 acre fields, if you add the same ratio, you're losing a lot of feed just from animal damage. And that's just from bears. We also have raccoons. Raccoons can do just as much damage as bears. They'll eat it. They'll eat the cobs. So they'll knock over the corn too. And if the cobs and ears are gone, the corn isn't as valuable either because that's where all the grain is for the cows. And that's why we're chopping it. So then the corn's useless. If it's just the stock, it's pretty much just a filler for the cow. So it's not as valuable. So you're fighting a lot of things here. So you want to be able to maximize your yield from your crops. And that's why the spraying comes in factor so that you're not having to only deal with small crops. You can justify having crop damage like this because you have more feed to work with. The reason that the Roundup did not kill this corn right here, but it did kill the weeds right here, is because this is GMO corn, stands for genetically modified organisms, genetically modified plants, same thing. And this corn is made so that it can withstand the chemical and it will not die unlike the grass does. And that way we can do this without hurting the crop at all. And we can give the crop the best chance and the best fighting chance we can possibly give it in the long run. So genetically modified plants are extremely valuable to us because if we do not have them, all our crop would look like that. And at the end of the day, there's probably not a single farmer that would have enough feed if you could not do this. Not only would our crop look like that, but then when you're chopping, because you can see right here, the grass was way taller than uh, where we're cutting right now because we cut, our, cut at around eight inches tall. The grass is about three feet off the grass with the weeds and they'll grow right up the stalks all the way up them. They will grow right to nine, 10 feet tall with the corn. Not, not uncommon at all. So then you're also feeding them this nasty grass and wheat, which is very unhealthy for the cows if they're getting a large volume of it. That's why we try to keep it to slim to none at all. So you're trying to keep the health of the cow up by not feeding them anything unnecessary. Well, if you found that interesting at all or useful and learn anything on why farmers spray their crops, fertilize them, or even why we use GMO crops, don't forget to like and subscribe.